There was only one truly great poetic genius and dramatist in his time, Christopher Marlowe, who in his thirtieth year, May 1593, was threatened by execution, following slanderous accusations of treason and heresy against him by the English Crown and Church. A feigned death has a life-saving operation, staged in Deptford with the help of Marlowe's employer, the powerful senior adviser of Queen Elizabeth, William Cecil, Lord Burley, saw him banished for his own safety, at the price of a permanent loss of identity and name. Cecil allowed Marlowe to escape into internal banishment and exile, writing behind a curtain of multiple pen names or pseudonyms such as Shakespeare and many others. The mythological hero Orpheus, like few, has strongly fueled the Renaissance imagination, and none took as many different shapes as a poet, translator, philosopher, historian, creator, priest, moralist, lover, musician, magician, civilizer, prophet, and others. Orpheus was clearly, above all else, the first poet, as he is called in contemporary literary treatises. Orpheus, his journey to hell, was entered in the Stationer's Register on August 26, 1595 by Richard Jones. It was published later that year, only two copies of the poem have survived. It is highly likely, that the initials, R. B. Gentleman, correspond to the name or pen name Richard Barnfield, equal to concealed surviving Marlowe. There are enough arguments to suppose, that Marlowe on a superficial level is telling us poetically the mythological tale of Orpheus, but on a deeper level metaphorically is equating Orpheus with himself as the first poet of the country, and with his very recent death, that is autobiographically, puts this journey to hell with his own destiny. Orpheus appears in major miscellanies of the time, for example the Phoenix Nest in 1593, or England's Helicon in 1600, or Davison's Poetical Rhapsody, in 1602, and other major contemporary literary genres. In the midst of this early literary fervor, an unidentifiable poet R. B. Gent, in 1595 uses that mythic content in an amazing poem, Orpheus, his journey to hell in 1595, the longest of the age, to dramatize the common Elizabethan view of Orpheus, above all, as the archetypal first poet, together with his fatal downfall. The author varies recognizably from the third-person perspective, Orpheus, his, thou, to the first-person perspective, I, myself, me, my, mine. With a considerable justification we may accept, 
that the true author of Orpheus is equating himself with the first poet of the country or of the age. He presents a simile of a portrait of his life situation, by its narrative chronology from birth to death, a chronology not present in earlier versions of the myth. The author's recreation of all Orpheus' individual poetic genres recreates metaphorically the life of himself as well. In the poem he recollects and reunites Orpheus' dismembered bodies, physically and poetically. We are directed to the connection between life genre and literary genre. The more you study Barnfield's poetry, the more confident you will have been, that it was just another alias name, such as Shakespeare, of the greatest, but conceal-led, English poet genius Christopher Marlowe. How could it happen that Barnfield is telling us, in Green's Funerals, Sonnet 9, that there was a man that so eclipsed his fame and purloined his plumes? That nobody can deny the same? Nay, more the men, that so eclipsed his fame. Purloined his plumes, can they deny the same? Ah, could my muse, old Malta's poet pass? If any muse could pass, old Malta's poet. Then should his name be set in shining brass. In shining brass for all the world to show it. That little children, not as yet begotten. Might royalize his fame, when he is rotten. But since my muse begins to veil her wings. And flutter love upon the lowly earth. As one that sugared sonnets seldom sings, except the sound of sadness, more than mirth, to tell the worth of such a worthy man, he'll leave it unto those that better can. Note. The poetical muse of old Malta's poet can only have been the poet who wrote the Jew of Malta. No other poet than Milo would be associated. His name should be set in shining brass for all the world, to show it. The literary children, not yet begotten might royalize his fame. When he is rotten. Consider. In 1594 there is no reasonable fit for R.B. As being a yet unknown superstar Richard Barnfield, compared to Marlowe, with such a fame and name and sugared sonnets.
Does the Shakespeare Stratford Academe really assume that, within a year in 1593-94, Barnfield and Marlowe used so many similar phrases within their poems? Only one example. Shaking her silver tresses in the air. Rainest on the earth resolved pearl in showers. By this, the foremost melting all in tears. And raining down, resolved pearls in showers. Rainest on the earth resolved pearl in showers. And raining down, resolved pearls in showers. More plausible, than a plagiarism of Richard Barnfield from Christopher Marlowe, is the logic assumption that such identical phrases originated from always the same person, using another pen name. Thus, Richard Barnfield being one of the multiple pseudonyms of Christopher Marlowe. In the heyday of Shakespeare's creativity in 1599, a small booklet of poems was printed by W. Shakespeare, but in fact composed allegedly by at least five poets, their names and poems not disclosed at the time, elaborated only centuries later, such as Richard Barnfield. Up to now, Shakespeare Academe has completely failed to explain why in 1599 the proud self-confident true poet genius, named Shakespeare, did allow poets such as Richard Barnfield, to be included in this booklet. It doesn't make enough sense, and led to fallacious theories of cooperation. The reason for the devastating failure of the orthodox Stratfordian Shakespeare Academe, to develop a coherent explanation, is that the thesis of the existence of a historical authorship plot could neither be imagined, nor was it, to this day, allowed, to be postulated or tested. Conclusion The Hidden Truth, or Concealed Reality Barnfield's poems, without exception, are from a single author, that is from concealed poet genius, Christopher Marlowe, who wrote under pseudonyms such as Barnfield, Shakespeare and others. All author names can, and must contextually be referred to a singular author.